Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and I'm here with the Sew the Look today. Now before we get into that, a couple of things. Number one, I just want to say thank you for all the wonderful response to the newsletter and to the free gift, the basics, wardrobe basics checklist that um, went out on Friday. Thank you so much. And if you don't know what I'm talking about and you're interested in having your own free copy of my um, Sewing a Handmade Wardrobe, your basics checklist, um, well, I'll pop a link to the video from Friday right here, uh, but you can just sign up for my newsletter on my, oh, my eyes just dry completely up. <laughs> You can sign up um, for the newsletter on my website, and that will be linked directly below this. Oh, my word. Sorry. <laughs> they were fine just a second ago, and then they just dry right up. Okay, so that is number one. And on that note, um, Everyday Style, their summer capsule opened up for um, pre-orders, I think, yesterday, Sunday. I'm filming this on Monday, so yesterday, but you can still pre-order your summer capsule now um, to get it $10 off, I think is what it is. I bought mine back in the um, um, Black Friday sale that they did um, on Black Friday, you know, back after Thanksgiving, um, where you got a really good price for the next four capsules. So I think I also get the fall capsule, and then that will be everything that I bought in the Black Friday sale. Uh, but if you haven't and you're interested in purchasing, they're just great frameworks, I think, for um, sewing your own capsule. Um, but that is for pre-sale. Um, right now it's going on so it's $10 off but it won't be out so you'll buy it early but then it doesn't you won't get you know your link and stuff to that until Thursday I think she said the ninth. so anyway that will be coming up and the plan if you are subscribed to my newsletter is that I am going to put out a kind of a summer um wardrobe uh checklist worksheet. So I'm not giving anything away with the Everyday Style Capsule. This will just be kind of a generic worksheet that you can use for, um, you know, checklists that you can use if you're going to be sewing your own summer capsule. Um, so anyway, because I'm going to be using that for mine as well. So there you have it. <laughs> <laughs> Those are kind of the wanted a clean house there. Um, just some announcements that I wanted to make, but I just wanted to thank you guys so much for all your kind comments and all the kind um, emails. And I'm still making my way through emails as well as um, through uh, comments from Friday's video. Also, my daughter's video on the event T-shirt that I turned um, to make it look you know better for her. Um, still making my way through those. So bear with me. I'm getting there. Also, I do have emails on people that have had maybe some issues with the. Um, signing up for the newsletter. And I just want to say, I, I will be getting to you. I'm, it's just taking me a bit to get down, you know, people are just sending notes and that kind of thing. Uh, but I do have a couple that need attention and I am aware I'm, I'm making my way through that today. Hopefully by the time you're seeing this on Tuesday, I will have made my way through that list. Um, but just as a heads up, when you do sign up for the newsletter, um, and make sure you check all your spam folders and all of that, but you get one email um, that says, welcome to the Tomcat Stitchery community type thing, um, and you have to click subscribe. So it's basically saying that you are signing up for the newsletter with that link. And then once you've done that, you have to hit the button and it'll take you back to my website, um, then you can just close out of it. But once you have clicked that button to say yes, you want to subscribe, then the second email comes and it is a little letter from me and that includes the link to the free basics checklist. So just want to be explain how all that works. But yes, if you've had issues, um, you know, I had someone that accidentally unsubscribed when they hit the wrong button, um, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, definitely let me know and you can <laughs> you can see either email me. My email is in the description box of all these videos or you can also contact me on the website. So, okay. That being said, let's get on to today's Sew the Look. I've not done a Sew the Look in quite a while and this is um, a piece that I had pulled out for my spring, um, I think 10 spring looks to recreate where I've taken 10 ready to wear looks and then paired them with patterns and fabrics and um, you know, give as inspiration mostly for things that you guys could recreate. So I've actually done one of the recreations for myself and it is this new sweater. Very excited about it. Um, so let's get into it because I'm actually showing you today uh, the adjustments that I made to the pattern and um, how I sewed it up because I sewed it up differently than how you would if you were following the instructions. So, okay. 
This was a, um, a sweater from, I think, Garnet Hill. Um, I will have a link to the original sweater down below. Um, but anyway, I loved this sweater. I thought it was so cool with like the seam line that kind of wrapped to the front. It just looked nice and relaxed. Um, it does have a little tiny pocket on it. I've omitted that on this um, recreation, mostly because I hate anything that brings attention to my chest. So. <laughs> so I I leave off pockets and that sort of thing. But that being said, it would be very easy to add a self-drafted tiny pocket to the sweater if you wanted an exact dupe. Now, I really loved, um, I, I was trying to find, this sweater comes in a few different colors, one of which is white, which is what I wanted to create. But unfortunately on the website, the white one is not on a model. So I'll just show a couple of different pictures in the other colorways of it on a model so you can kind of see. So just kind of the gist, it has this little split hemline um, on the bottom of the sweater. Again, it's got that seam that comes forward for some interest. Long sleeve, just kind of a summer lightweight sweater crew necked. So for the pattern, and this is the same pattern that I paired it with um, in the video. I think this is a different fabric though. I could be wrong. I can't really remember to be honest, but um, I have chosen the uh, Love Notions Lincoln Top, which ironically, and I didn't even plan this, I'm actually wearing another version of the Lincoln Top. <laughs> this, this is my first version um, as I'm filming this. This is just what I had on today. Um, but it is the Love Notions Lincoln Top. Now this pattern does have a a little bit longer version where the back hem and the front hem are a little bit more the same around um, or a cropped one where the front is a little bit shorter. This is the cropped version that I've made. I've made a size medium, the cropped version, and I've shortened the body by an inch. That's what I just have to do with Love Notions. Um, but I've also chosen the full bust front. So size medium, full bust front, and I have um, shortened the bodice by an inch. <coughs> Um, the out of doors is trying to kill me right now. Allergies <laughs> is coming for me. So excuse me if I sound congested or the dry eyes, the tickle, all that kind of stuff. Okay. <laughs> so um, I just knew that this pattern would be perfect for recreating this Garnet Hill sweater for a nice summer weight sweater and um, with just a few minor, you know, tweaks and that sort of thing to the pattern. Um, I've also really been wanting a good white sweater. I bought a white sweater from Target last spring, I guess. It wasn't perfect. It was okay and it worked for what I wanted, but it wasn't perfect. The neckline was a little high for me um, and it was a little boxy, just a little bit too boxy for me, um, <coughs> but it worked. Sorry but I really wanted one that would be like a tried and true in my wardrobe. And I think I created that with this. But if you did watch my video on Friday where I'm talking about wardrobe basics, I would not include this in my wardrobe basics necessarily. Um, <coughs> only because, sorry, <coughs> Only because I would I would consider this a like a beyond to use verbiage from the everyday style um, school. I would call this a beyond basic because it is a white sweater. But I think that these the, the split hem, this really cool um, seam line here, I think that that takes it from just like a plain you know because I have some plain you know not crew necessarily, but a higher necked sweaters that are like long sleeved, lightweight sweaters that I've purchased um, at Banana Republic and at J. Crew. that I would call a basic. This is a little bit more, more than that. So um, yeah, I don't know that I would put this in my basics and your Beyond Basics can be solid colors as well. I wear a lot of solid colors. Um, I think solids definitely outweigh prints in my closet, but I do enjoy a good print. I just use those strategically. So that's kind of how I would classify this. All right, so I knew when I was making this, not only was the Lincoln a perfect pattern, but I needed a good sweater fabric. And I found such a cool one from Minerva, and I'm so excited, um, I'm so excited about this. So I, um, actually, I received this as part of their um, ambassador program. I buy pretty much all of my Minerva fabric. I'm sorry about this coughing, this is so annoying. <coughs> I don't know if it's dust I've kicked up, although we were just outside photographing these. I tell you, between, I have thyroid um, disease, and so that causes my, dry, my chronic dry high, but then also allergies exacerbate that, and then I think something, it's windy, a storm is getting ready to brew up, so I think I inhaled a lot of pollen while we were outside, so I really apologize. Okay, so this fabric is a cotton knit, and it looks like a lightweight hand knit fabric. 
Now when I cut into this, um, I did serge everything and I'm gonna, I'll show you that here in a second because I'm gonna show you how I sewed this differently than the pattern, but I did make sure and serge things somewhat quickly because this did ravel. Typically, your knit fabrics do not ravel because um, the way, just the nature of things being knitted versus woven, but because this is a little bit looser knit, um, it was raveling a little bit. Um, not as bad as a woven, but I was very careful to serge those edges. So if you were going to sew with this, I would say, you know, once you've got your pieces cut out, you would definitely want to finish your seam allowances with a zigzag, a faux overlock, um, flat fell, <coughs> uh, surgering, whatever, if you were making, um, using this fabric. I would not leave the seam allowances raw in this case. So um, this is just, this fabric is so cool. And it came in quite a few different colors. I'll leave a link down to it uh, below. Again, I was gifted this as part of their brand ambassador program. I um, was very interested in trying it out, but most of the time I buy, in fact, the fabric for the ribbing that I used, um, I did purchase. But most of the stuff, I, I do, I don't do as much brand ambassador work for Minerva as I used to just because of time, but I do shop from them a lot where I spend my own money. That being said, I do have affiliate links with them, which means they pay me a small commission for anything that you guys purchased from those links. But I'm very, I like to be very transparent about that. It's no extra cost to you, but I do get um, a little commission from them when things are purchased from those links. Okay, so I use this cotton knit. Highly recommend this fabric for looser sweaters, um, cardigans, that sort of thing. It does not have great recovery, although it's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be, um, but it doesn't have great recovery because it's 100% cotton and it's a looser weave. So if you imagine um, if you bought like a cotton sweater at the store, something similar. That being said, because it's cotton, um, wash and I would pop this in the dryer. Just to, if anything, if anything bags out, that dryer just kind of helps it back in a little bit. Um, I mean, I wouldn't do it on a high setting because you don't want to shrink it, but wash and dry your fabric before you make anything with it and maybe dry that the first time on a higher setting to get any shrink out that might be in there. Um, but yeah, going forward, I would wash and put this in the dryer. Um, just maybe not fully dry it or dry it on a um, not as hot of a setting, like just kind of a warm setting. Uh, and yeah, it, it's just really great for wash and wear. Um, for the cuffs, I chose this, um, it's part of the Minerva Core range and it is their uh, tubular knit ribbing, I think is what it's called. I'll link it down below. This is in the, I think it's the cream. I'll link the color that this is and also the color the sweater is. This is not a white sweater, it's a cream sweater. And I didn't use the white ribbing, I used the, the ivory or the cream ribbing. So I use that for both the cuffs and for the neckband. Um, this pattern actually doesn't come with a neckband. Uh, it gets finished off actually like this one <laughs> with like a piece of, it's not bias tape, but it's like knit binding that goes in on the inside for the boat neck view. And um, I made the scoop neck view for this, but the, that neck is finished off in the same way. Um, but I just added my own neck band to that. So I will show you um, both the adjustments I did to the pattern and how I drafted this neck band as well, and also the cuffs. So this pattern comes with a three quarter length sleeve. I have short arms, so I just left that sleeve pattern as is and literally just added a cuff to the bottom of the three quarter length sleeve and they're full length sleeves to me. Now, that being said, if you've got normal length arms or longer arms, you are probably going to want to add a little bit to the length of the sleeve. Um, but remember, you don't need a full length sleeve because the cuff is going to, you know, take it the rest of the way. So I will talk about how I drafted those pattern pieces as well, which is all very easy. I think that's it. I think that's everything about the pattern. Um, I don't want to talk too long because I have a lot that I'm showing you in the actual sewing process. So... That being said, let me know if you have any questions on this down below and I'll answer those as soon as I can. Friday, I'm gonna have up, I know you guys get excited about these videos, but I'm gonna go ahead and do my summer ready to wear looks and 10, you know, 10 ready to wear looks for summer and the patterns and fabrics, um, I'll have those picked and stuff if you guys wanna create those. So just kind of some inspiration um, type sewing as we're getting into our summer sewing and in kind of anticipation of the summer capsule coming out. Now when you watch that video on Friday, the summer capsule will already be out and I will be doing a video on my personal plans for my own summer capsule, um, but that'll probably be next week um, going into that. Yes, I believe so. Maybe a week from Friday will be that video, me talking about my plans for my own summer wardrobe. Um, and I'm going to be sewing through some basics as well. So <laughs> um, yeah, 
I think that's all. Okay, I'm gonna take you to the cutting table for pattern work and then we'll go to the sewing room and sew this up. I hope you guys have enjoyed this and I will see you again on Friday. I hope you get some sewing in. Okay, bye guys. Okay, so I just wanna go over the, um, straight, <laughs> the pattern pieces to this pattern with you and then how I adjusted mine. So you'll have your, um, your front. I've gone with the cropped length and the full bust, although you could use the, you know, the regular length um, in standard bust, obviously. So that is the front. And then you'll have a back piece here. And then you'll have a sleeve. This is the three quarter length sleeve that I am using here. So I grab that piece. And then you also will have um, some binding pieces. You'll have the uh, boat neck binding because there's two neckline options. You'll have the scoop neck binding and also the arm side binding. So if you were doing the sleepless version. Um, for these three pieces, I am completely, oh, there should also be somewhere around here an interfacing piece, which I've clearly dropped somewhere. There's also an interfacing piece if you're doing the um, the button placket there. I don't know where mine is. It's around here somewhere. Okay, so I'm going to put both the interfacing piece and then all these binding pieces to the side. Let's start with the sleeve here. Now, I did the three-quarter length sleeve, but I wanted a full length sleeve. I have very short arms, so I was able to just cut a cuff and um, make it work. However, um, you may need to, uh, you know, cut and spread to add um, length. It just kind of depends on your arms. So just make sure that whenever all is said and done that they're going to have the length that you want for um, full length. Or obviously you can do a cuff on a three quarter length too if you'd like. Um, but then you may want to shorten this a little bit. So what I've done is I measured, um, you can see where this piece kind of comes out here. This is the hem that gets folded back if you're doing the regular version. I kind of you know, pretended that that wasn't there, cut that off a little bit. Um, I actually, when I was cutting this, this piece out, I folded that hem allowance up so that it wasn't part of it. But I just measured the circumference here at the bottom, um, including the seam allowances, which are three eighths of an inch. I wanted to include those because the cuff's gonna get joined um, as well. I wanted my cuffs to be, um, let's see, two and a half, a little over two inches. Oh no, I cut mine six. Sorry, this says five inches. I actually cut mine six. I wanted mine to be like a little like two and five eighths inch um, length. I like a little bit thicker cuff. So I cut mine 8.5 inches for the width. So that's the part along the stretch. And then I cut them six inches long. Um, disregard that five. <laughs> I cut mine six inches long. Now I got the eight and a half because I measured this sleeve opening and on the size medium that is 10 inches. And then I wanted to cut a width that was 85% of my circumference because then that causes you to stretch just enough to get a really nice fit. So that's I, the 85, um, making something 15% smaller is my most used percentage um, when it comes to putting on neckline bindings and also cuffs and that sort of thing. So that's where I got those numbers. Um, and then I just sewed, you know, the short sides together. Well, I guess it yeah, the short ends together. Um, and then it got folded over on itself to create the cuff. But that's the rectangles that I cut were 8.5 wide. So that was um, the width, the stretchiest part, and then six inches long. Because then it got folded up and then you have your seam allowances. Okay, so that's what I did for the sleeve. Now for the back, you have this little grown on facing that is here. Um, for the button placket, but I just wanted to sew the seam. I didn't need the, um, the placket. So what I did was this edge up here has the seam allowances included. And I just took a line and went straight down and I can't remember exactly what the width was of that placket that I took off. It was an inch and five eighths. So I just took a, a ruler and went there and made sure that I was inch and five eighths here at the bottom and I drew a new line in. And this does include the seam allowance because we're going here flush with the seam allowance. But then I folded up my one inch hem allowance 
and true that up. So you can kind of see down here at the bottom, it still goes in just like it does here so that when everything gets folded up and trued, um, it, it goes in correctly. So that's all I did. So when I cut out my fabric, I just cut along this line as opposed to this line. And then the same thing for the front. It has a smaller um, little grown on facing there. That facing is what, five eighths of an inch? So I just, again, went straight down from that underarm seam and then I trued up the bottom. It's also an inch, you know, folded that up and so it comes back out just like the original pattern does. So I just cut out along this line um, to omit that facing and then it, yeah, it gets sewn. Well, you'll see in a second. <laughs> and then I cut, um, I wanted to do the scoop neck on this one, which is this uh, neckline here. And what I did for this was I measured the circumference of my neckline. So I measured the front and then I also measured my back neckline. Um, and I omitted the, now these are cut on the fold, so you're good there, but I omitted the seam allowance on the shoulders. And then I took that number, you know, this length minus the um, seam allowance plus this length minus the seam allowance here at the shoulder took that times two, and then I, um, which was 24 and a quarter inch, was the what my neckline measured, and I took that times 0.85 again, and got, I think I had to round a little bit, the 20.5 inch band. I didn't worry about adding seam allowances here because it's just a little extra added stretch. Um, that works out fine, but you could go ahead and add your uh, three quarters, so three eighths on, the, on each end. And then I cut my bands two inches wide because when you um, fold the two inches wide on top of each other, you have a one inch wide band. And then when you take away the three eighths inch seam allowance, you end up with a five eighths inch finished width, width, which is my favorite width. So that is how I got my neck band. I hope that makes sense. So I just measured the neckline, took that times 0.85, and then um, cut that length times two because I want two to be the uh, length. So my greatest stretch is the length of the band and then two is the length to get my neck band. So I hope that is helpful. As always, leave any questions you have below and now I'm going to show you how to sew it up. Okay, so let's have a look here at what we've got. So I have, this is the bottom of the front. I have gone ahead and surged the bottoms and the sides of both the um, front and the back. This is the back, and these are obviously the hems, wrong sides. And then I've placed my double stick um, fusible stay tape, which is right here, uh, that is one inch wide. Love this stuff, it's so good for knits. <laughs> So yeah, so I've cut off that extra piece um, that I showed you at the table. When I cut these out, surged both the sides, surged the hems, and um, have applied my fusible um, tape. But I've left the paper on. I've not pulled the paper off yet. I have also cut out, um, out of my ribbing, this is a neckband that is two inches wide by 85% of the scoop neck circumference. Um, whatever that is for what size pattern that you're making. And I have sewn it together and then pressed it in half. So it's wrong sides together. So it's ready to be installed. And then I've got my cuffs that are six inches long by the width, um, which is 85% of the bottom of the sleeve. So, um, which mine happens to be eight and a half inches. And I've also sewn those short ends together, folded them in half, and given them a good press. So my cuffs are also ready. So that is everything um, all prepped and ready to go. So now we're going to do our hems first uh, before we do anything else. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. Okay. So again, this is kind of weird because we're doing the hems first. So I will, this is the back. We'll start off at the back. Okay. So on the right side here, um, and you should notice that it angles like back in on itself because it is, you know, you've got such a diagonal line here. It angles on the front as well, but it angles out the opposite way. So um, what I'm gonna do, so this is right side up and I'm leaving my paper on. We'll pull, we'll tear that out in a little bit, but I'm just gonna fold this up right at the edge of that tape, um, which should be right, you know, at that, at that corner there. And I'm just going to sew. Oh, well, 
It helps if you get your machine ready. One moment. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so again, right side is up, and I'm folding my um, hem up right sides together, which is going to be counterintuitive. And we're just going to sew from the top of the um, hem part, three-eighths of an inch, because that's our seam allowance, all the way down to the base. So it's just a really short little jaunt. And that should fit perfectly back up in itself um, because it was trued up that way. Oh, I also want to, I like to lengthen my stitch length to um, three millimeters, and I'm also using a ballpoint needle. So that's very simple. Um, at this point, you can usually tear that paper on that side right out of that seam line. And then you can clip your excess, your corner right there. So now when you turn this right side out, and we'll peel this paper off here in a minute, but when you turn this right side out and press it, that edge there is gonna be finished off really nicely. Um, because when we sew our side, when our side seams get sewn, we will stop at that point so there'll be like a little V break that's there, okay? So now I'm just going to do that um, on the other side. I'll come back, I mean the front is the same, but um, I'll come back and show you just because it's angled a little differently. Um, yeah, so I'll be right back. Okay, so now here's the front, right sides up. So um, I'm just, again, just like on the back, just gonna fold that up and that cut line should be flush. And I'm gonna sew at 3 eighths of an inch from the top there. Like so. And then I'm just gonna Carefully peel that paper out of that seam allowance. You know, you could stop your tape before it got into the seam allowance, but honestly, I feel like the tape makes this area like it's like an interfacing almost. Um, I mean, uh, the double stick tape does wash out, but um, it really is like an interfacing, and so it gives it just a little bit more stability, especially this wide um this 100 percent cotton knit and it's like a like looks like a hand knit sweater <laughs> it um it gets wonky easily but having a little bit of that excess having that tape all the way down really helps okay so i'm just gonna pull this out of the seam allowance first careful not to pull those stitches out. And then I'm going to clip the corners just to reduce some bulk there. Okay, and now I'm gonna go ahead, a lot of times I go through and um, just pull a little bit of the paper back at a time so nothing gets stuck weird, but these little hems aren't very, aren't very long and there we go. Okay. So I'm just going to pull the tape completely off the back here and then you have your glue that's left. So now I'm just going to very carefully turn this and it's not super sticky right now. It only gets sticky when you add the heat. I'm just going to turn this like so and I've got like this little excess that I don't really want hanging out the back and I'm just going to trim that flush just to make it look nice and neat on the inside so that it you know looks more like that so now i'm going to go over to the um and your side seam should come be coming in you know three eighths of an inch a little bit but now i'm just going to go over to the ironing board and press up this hem all the way across and i'm just bending it right at the edge of that uh glue tape all the way and i do this for the front and the back and then um yeah and then i'll meet you back here so I've got um, 
my hems all done on both sides. And you could go ahead and stitch this now if you wanted to. But if you use that double stick tape, you don't have to. You can do it at the very end to stitch everything up. And I'm going to use a sewing machine because this doesn't need to stretch. So I can. I don't need to use a cover stitch or anything. So I have my front and back attached to the shoulders. I've put my neck band in and I've gone ahead and put my sleeves in. But my side seams are still open. I've also finished off um, both um, side seams of my sleeves because I'm going to do it in one fell swoop, but I'm going to press that open. <clears throat> so it needs to go ahead and be finished off. And a lot of times with knits, you don't necessarily have to finish off the seam allowance, but this unravels. So <laughs> you want, you're going to want to do that. So um, keep in mind, let me just line everything up, that your front and back are not the same length. Okay? They're not supposed to be. So... There's like, sorry, like that much gap. So I've just kind of gone through, and I think um, I'm just going to do a little bit of a slit. So I'm actually going to sew down, and I'm going to stop right at the top of the hem here. So I'm, oh, it's on my arm. Gross. <laughs> so I'm going to do three-eighths of an inch all the way down, and I'll, you know, kind of keep that, this open for a little bit and then um, stop right as I get to this, the surging line of the front hem, okay? So that is what I'm gonna do. So I'm just going to pin my side seams just to make sure, and I like that sleeve seam to go towards the sleeve. And you don't need any of the double stick tape at the bottom of the sleeve because we're gonna be putting a cuff on that. But if you were gonna be hemming it per normal, you could totally do that. And when I get down here, I'm just going to kind of pull those seams um, out of the way so I don't accidentally, s I mean, I am going to be stitching them down, but I don't want them to get stitched down wonky. And I'm just going to pop a pin right where I want my stitching to stop. And then I think I'm just going to pin the bottoms of my sleeves here. This was super curly here at the bottom of my sleeves. That's going to be fun to put my cuffs in later. <laughs> okay, so now we're just going to go over here. Oh, geez. Hold on. I'm breaking my tripod. Okay, totally broke my tripod. <laughs> I have to go to a different one. Oh, putting my mechanic on that now. Okay, so we're going to start at the bottom here and sew all the way from the hem to the cuff of the sleeve. And again, I'm just trying to pull that a little bit out of my way. Okay. And marking that. So I'm going to do the same to the other side, and then I'm going to go and press the seam open. Okay? I think that should be about right. 
And when you're doing the other side, you just want to make sure that you have um, a similar gap there for that to split. Okay, so I'm going to do the other side and then I'll meet you back here. Okay, so I have my sweater done. So I've done my side seams, pressed that open, and then attached my cuffs. Um, so yeah, so now we just need to hem and this is just a very easy thing. We're just going to go around. Uh, I'm going to sew with the top of the sweater against the feed dogs because this is kind of like being interfaced, having the interface side up. Um, so then my feed dogs can ease anything in. This fabric has like zero recovery just because it's just a 100% cotton knit. Um, so I don't want to stretch anything out unduly. Okay, so I'm just going to sew, I think I'm gonna start at the back, but I'm sewing again with the um, top of the sweater down against the feed dogs. And um, I've got my stitch length at uh, three millimeters. You could probably go up, actually let's go up to 3.5. 3.5 millimeters, okay. Wait, and I've just run out of bobbin. <laughs> well, I guess at least it did it there and not halfway around the sweater. And there goes that empty bobbin. There we go. I'm winding another bobbin as I'm sewing here. Okay, so basically just your typical stitch, stitch, stitch. But then when we get over here to the slit, I'm just gonna get kind of close and then I'm going to stitch up. to that split and then stitch over and then go back down. Um, and then once I've gone all the way around the hem of the sweater here, I'll go back to those little areas where we went you know, up the seam a little bit and then straight. And we're just gonna do a couple of back and forth stitches just to, um, cause that's kind of, a, it's a weak point right there. So we'll just go back and forth with a couple of like bar tacks basically, just to make sure. That everything is nice and secure. And I do tell you, this um, double stick tape makes this part of the sewing so much easier. I'm trying to figure out where I started and stopped sewing. <laughs> okay, so now that I've gone, a little bit of a thread tangle on the right side, which I will fix in a moment. Where does that gray thread come from? Okay, we'll fix that in a second. But you can see here, barely probably, where I've stitched across that seam. I'm just gonna go now from the right side. I'm just gonna sew along that. You could also do a little zigzag bar tack if you wanted to. Okay, so three times. And then I'm gonna go over to this side, do the same thing. There you have it. We've got a dupe for the Garnet Hill sweater. Okay, as always, if you have any questions, let me know down in the uh, comment box below. See you guys next time.